In this video, I'm going to be talking about Andrew Tate and his views on depression. And for those of you that don't know who Andrew Tate is... Who am I kidding? And before we get into this video as well, I just want to say I am not mentioning Andrew Tate for the views and the clicks. So keep watching and find out whether I agree with Andrew Tate or not. King D back with another one and this one's called Andrew Tate and Mental Health. So I'm going to show you a little snippet now of Andrew Tate talking about depression. And here it is. I don't believe in depression. Don't mess with me about depression because I don't believe in it. If you're asleep in your bed in the middle of the night and you hear a noise and you believe in ghosts, now you're afraid. But if you don't believe in ghosts, ah, it's the wind and you go back to sleep. You give the ghosts power by believing in them. Your house is only haunted if you believe in ghosts. Belief is a powerful thing. And you believe depression is a crippling disease and that's why you're afraid of it. I don't believe in depression. I cannot be depressed. That's why everything you're messaging me is bullshit. Now I dare say that's triggered a lot of folk. What do you mean your depression isn't real? Calm your tits and let me dig into this one. So first things first, of course depression is real. And I've seen Andrew Tate himself state it as well. And I actually get exactly where he's coming from. And I'll tell you why. So a little bit about me, about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Or ADD, whatever you like to call it. Now at the time I was really struggling with my mental health and I'd not been in a good way for a long time. And I'd find that I'd always just struggle through life just to be the same as everybody else, just have to try harder. Whether it looked that way or not. And sometimes it was a case of trying to try. So upon finding out that I had ADHD, it was like a double-edged sword, really. So like on one side, it was like, ah, nice to finally put a name on it and understand that it's not me, it's this thing that's uh, that's been bothering me. But on the flip side, it was like, oh, there is something wrong with me. And for a while afterwards, that's all I could think about. Everything I did, I was like, oh, it's the ADHD. And that was all the time. Uh, there's no cure for it and... As far as I was concerned, it's just a part of who I am. Thank fuck I didn't get diagnosed sooner. And I'm only saying this from my point of view, but I'm very glad I didn't get diagnosed in my earlier years. And I'll tell you why. And I'm not saying this is for everyone, but it, for me, I'm glad I actually struggled for all them years. First of all, it gave me a resilience that I would never have had otherwise. And secondly, I could have used that as an excuse. If I'm failing at life or... Or, you know, I'm not being at my best, or something's going wrong, or I've done something wrong. Just blame it on the ADHD. Not that I was a bad kid or anything. I mean, I had my moments, but all around, I was a pretty decent kid. So anyway, being the stubborn twat that I am, I decided I was going to beat it. And this was a very, very gradual process. And it only really started when I stopped identifying myself as somebody with ADHD. I just stopped talking about it as though I didn't even have it. In fact, other than right now, I can. I think there's only been one time in the past year where I've actually mentioned it to anybody. And as controversial as it may sound, and I don't really care, but to this day, I do not identify myself with having ADHD. I do not consider myself to have ADHD. And nowadays, I'm able to focus way better than I ever could before, and I'm way more productive. I'm still quite forgetful, though. But I can take a look around at most people, and I think they've got worse attention spans than I have. And for most people, that's because they're just so overstimulated. So literally, I would just tell myself, I don't have ADHD anymore, or it does not affect my life in the slightest. And it doesn't anymore. Not one bit. Because I tell myself that, and I believe it. And I'll give you another example as well. I used to say all the time, God, I'm getting old. I'm getting old, I am. I'm aching, I'm hurting, I'm constantly in pain tired all the time I couldn't keep my head upright when after after I'd finished work and yes I made healthier changes in life like the fasting that really helped with my joint pain massively but also I made a conscious decision that I wasn't going to say it anymore I'm not going to say that I'm getting too old I don't think like that anymore I'm in a different mindset so back when I used to say oh I'm getting old before my time or god I'm absolutely knackered me I've got the body of an 80 year old 
and I've stopped saying all that now and you know what I'm feeling better and younger than I did throughout my old 20s and I'm 35 now and I'll tell you another thing as well these last few years and I'm not joking here if someone guesses my age they normally guess me younger but when I was in my 20s people used to guess me in my 30s and now all you'll catch me saying is I've got plenty of years left in me um, I'm going to be doing the same things now as I am when I'm 80. Well, let's get on to something else now, shall we? What about social anxiety? Because every fucker's got that nowadays, haven't they? Ever since social media blew up. We all have some level of social anxiety. It's the stranger danger instinct. If we don't know a person, well, we don't know what they're capable of. We need to be on guard. We're supposed to have some sort of anxiety there. You're going to have heightened senses, aren't you? You've got to be alert. And now I know there are some people with very severe social anxiety that would actually get labelled with having social anxiety. Not that they should deem that as part of them either. Well, then all these people go, I've got social anxiety. I'm your duke. They've just completely diluted its meaning now as well, haven't they? So the people with the real problems, it's just, it means nothing now because half the world's got social anxiety. So if I went up to a person I don't even know, there is going to be some level of anxiety there. Even for me, and I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. Hence the YouTube channel. <laughs> now if I went, oh you know what, I didn't like going up to that person, I felt all nervous and shit. Really shit. I might tell myself, oh I must have that social anxiety. Oh no. <laughs> And then next thing you know, I'm thinking, oh, I've got social anxiety, I've got social anxiety, I've got social anxiety. And next thing you know, I'm identifying myself as a person with social anxiety. And I've just gave it all my power. Now I won't go near anybody. Oh, I'm not doing that. I've made an excuse now. I've got social anxiety. I'm just not going to do it. Not going to do it. I get anxious. And then it's actually going to get worse and worse, isn't it? Because then you're not going to people anymore. And once upon a time, you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable with somebody I don't know and just going up and talking to them. But if you do it all the time, it's easy, isn't it? And you think, oh, what am I getting anxious about? But if you keep refusing to talk to people or go out or anything like that, then you're just feeding it. You're constantly feeding it if you're doing that. Same with aches and pains. Now, right now, I'm not hurting anywhere. But if I sit down and focus on what's hurting me, well, let me do that now, shall we? You know what, my back's hurting a little bit, and oh, I've got a little niggle right at the bottom. Oh, my toes are a bit, you know what I mean? Come to think of it, this shoulder. You know when you start creating problems? If I really focus on all the things that hurt, my mind's going to find them, and it's going to amplify them. It's getting back to that negative space, isn't it? If you're constantly looking for negative things, you're going to find them. But if you're blocking them out, you're not giving them power, you're fine. I'm fine. I know I'm fine. Nothing's hurting. So going back to what Andrew Tate said, I'm going to have to 100% back him on this one. Now, I'm not saying you can just magically cure depression just by saying it. Or that you're going to magically cure any sort of mental illness just by identifying as a person without it. There are some mental issues that you know, it's it's just not going to happen. But for a lot of people with a lot of things, you can really change your life. And if you have got severe depression, say, and you've been riddled with it all your life, that doesn't determine who you are. You are not a depressed person. You're a person who's depressed. There's a big difference there, okay? And just because you are depressed and you may have been depressed all your life, that does not mean that you're going to be depressed forever. So get that in your head right now. Stop giving all these problems you've got power. If you're going to surrender to anything that's going to make you weaker or take away your power, well, it's just going to drag you deeper in and it's going to hurt you more than it ever would have done. Get that positivity. You're only going to bring in stuff that's good for you. And with that said, like the video. And to all the uh, Andrew Tate fans that have caught on to this one, Please subscribe, I need, I need all the subscribers I can get. This channel's going places, and you're going to enjoy a lot of my content. And tell your friends as well, because I can guarantee you now, I'm in the early stages here. And when this kicks off, you're going to be the coolest one around. Oh, cheers, mate. That was a good find you got there, old King D. Yeah, we love him, mate.
and be the best you and do it for you.